Right. What a dance, the Tweety Tin Yown. Good morning. How are you? Are you alright? I'm back. I'm back at the mental. Now then, first things first. Mental, camera, press record equals car. So a car will appear within, well, they've been, been, been slowing down of, as of late. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's a scientific fact. Camera, mental, press record equals car. Uh, so yeah, anyway, a uh, few questions have been asked now. It's not 25 plus years, it's, is that a car? 30 plus years now. <laughs> uh, and I've been asked, a few have asked, wow, you've been documenting the mental before I was born. <laughs> have I got any old footage? Well, yes, I did have, and no, I haven't got now. I did have old Super 8 footage. Um, in the 80s, when I had a little Super 8 camera, started off with a silent camera, and then I went on to sound, for editing sound, oh, it was a nightmare. But I did have old footage, but old Super 8 film, it does not keep, well, unless you store it in correct conditions, but it all stuck together and the film all deteriorated and that, but, so I did have footage of the mental from the 80s, um, and when did it all start? When I started documenting the mental? 30 years! 30 plus years now. It was 25, but it's 30 now. There's no sign of a car. Can't believe this. But yeah, it all started off. Uh, I've got a lot of connections. I've never worked at the mental. But as a kid, grew up, Loveling Garage. Um, we were the only taxi firm in Denby at that time. And we did a lot of taxi work. And I used to jump in the car and, you know, and I used to, here we go, this is a car. That must be about a minute. And, uh, yeah, I used to uh, jump in the taxis, you know, and we used to, I used to know a lot of the patients. I used to know them by, by name and talking. George, the singer, on a Sunday. I've talked about these before, but I'm just sort of answering a few questions that have been had. I love answering questions on the mental... And, uh, yeah, whoa, oh, hang on, where's the, uh, no drones, no drones, where's the, where's the guard dog sign? Oh, guard dog's on patrol. Must be further down when I saw it. Uh, yeah, they've got guard dogs there, security, but yeah, um, we're with the only, um, taxi firm. Uh, we used to do a lot, like I say, taxis. And we used to do the, uh, the wages run. From the, uh, it was the Midland Bank then, it was, then it was the HSBC, but it's closed down now, but it was the Midland Bank. They used to phone up and they used to say, Wells Fargo, because that was like an old stagecoach in the, in the cowboy days, wasn't it, with the wages or something. And they used to phone up and all they used to say was Wells Fargo. So we used to go there, we used to pick up the wages clerk, he had a briefcase and it was chained to his wrist. We used to go to the, uh, the, the it was the Midland then. And sometimes I would go, you know, just for the ride out. And used to come out with all the wages, because in them days it was all paid cash. And you think how much was money was was in that, that briefcase. You're talking thousands, and in them days that was a lot of money. All cash. But, uh, yeah, and, and like I say, used to know a lot of the patients. And I saw a patient fall to his death. Uh, and I remember it to this day. Jumped in the taxi and... Pulled up right outside the front front door, which is roughly there. I can't see much on this, but there is the front front door. And he came out, and he was uh, in pajamas, slippers, and he had a dressing gown on. He looked down at me, and he attempted to come down the steps, and he fell, bang! And I was the only one that witnessed it. That was the I must have been about eight, seven or eight, something like that. Oh, here we go, he's the guard dog sign here, you know. No drones as well, don't come anywhere near here with a drone. Otherwise you get 10 years imprisonment and shot on sight and... Yeah, warning, guard dogs. Don't come anywhere near here with a drone as well. So yeah, that's, uh, just thought I'd uh, have a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a Q and A question and answer, so, so we say. So yeah, I've got a lot of connections with the place and like I say, when we were kids, 
We used to cut through, we used to pinch the apples from the orchard that was here, jump over the wall and then over just by Gwynver in there. We used to cut them in half and heat them up on the, uh, the hot water, you know, the pipes. It was like a, a, a network of hot water. That's like how they used to heat the, the, the mental. And then, uh, yeah, you know, like I say, and then I just sort of got video cameras and things and, you know, off off Super 8 in them days there was no video cameras, no mobile phones and nothing like that. But I did, like I said, I did have Super 8 footage of this place. And then I got into, to, you know, and then it just just got into it. And that's, that's how it's, I did, you know, just over the years and I've just, and I'll still, I ain't going to give up anytime soon documenting the mental. So, yeah, biggest employer, well, must have been the biggest employer in North Wales. And it's just got so much history and so much memories and stuff like that. We used to, the jumpers, we used to call them, the escapees. There's four categories of of um, patients, the ones that were locked in. It was Bring Golai, the back there, secure ward, where the patients were a danger not only to themselves and to staff, but to other patients. And that was a secure ward. There was patients that were locked in. The wards. There was patients that were allowed out into the airing courts. There was two airing courts, one there, and on the other side of the front buildings, there was a door which allowed them out. And all they used to do is wander around in these airing courts with walled areas. There were patients that were allowed out in the grounds, and there were patients that were allowed out. They could come and go as they pleased. Um, like George on a Sunday morning, used <laughs> to sing. He was quite a good singer, he's only a little fella. Big grey trench coat and his I don't know if he was military, but he always boots were always shiny. And he had like grey hair and he's like a square with shape you know it was cut and the top of his head was like square. Uh, yeah, he was, a, he was a good singer and if ever we come across him in town, which was very rare, it was always on a Sunday, but if you ever see him on town we'd say, hey, George, and we run to him and say, give us a song, George! And he'd be <laughs> singing away in town. So yeah, like I say, that's uh, just thought I'd answer a few questions. And and then over the years, um, clashed with security, some some good clashes, some not so good clashes. And Elwin, of course, rest in peace, Elwin. Um, contrary to what some people think, I never had it in for Elwin. Sometimes he had it in for me. Sometimes he didn't, he was like chalk and cheese, but he actually worked for my father when he was in Loveling Garage. He was a mechanic and he worked for my father, so I'd known him since I was that high, knee high to a grasshopper. Um, so yeah, so rest in peace, Elwin. Um, I don't condone, I know sort of what he was trying to do, but someone's slowing down there. So he, you get the hoots and you get the ways and you get the shouts. I heard it last week. Someone said he was walking his dog and he goes, Oh, Denby Vids. And I said, Yeah, well, I watch all your videos and stuff like that. But yeah, old Elwin. Um, but yeah, he was a bit, you know, OTT with the, his methods, shall we say. And the, there was the guard dog incident and uh, my collaboration with two multi millionaires with put bids in to take over the place and stuff and it's just over the years and like I say uh, 30 plus years I say now and I ain't gonna stop anytime soon it's just something I got into and that's it so so yeah just uh, thought I'd have that to a bit of a natter and Cleveland there nice property that that was nothing to do with the mental that was the engineers house that was the engineering section here with a way bridge and and if you looked you'd see roughly there you'd see the chimney which is uh not you know i don't remember that actually getting demolished the chimney but i remember it there when we were kids we used to go through to to the pavilion never used to go down this way never used to go down the road we always used to cut through let's get to the pavilion and the rugby ground at the back there but you'd see the chimney and there'd be a team of patients. A lot of the patients had jobs. The hospital wouldn't be, wouldn't have survived without patient labour. I have to shout a bit because a big tractor going past, yeah. Uh, they built the pavilion, the rugby ground, and a lot of the, um, and used to be the, the big water tank. 
above there and they used to they built the dam at the back there the Denby dam and they used to transfer water and stuff like that and like I said there was a team of patients who used to chip the uh, coal so the correct size so it would fit in the boilers and stuff like that and like I say I, I used to know a lot of the patients and stuff and it's just something I got into over the years and like I say 30 plus years now and it's something I'm I'm just not gonna stop anytime soon so yeah you're okay as long as you don't come anywhere near here with the drone no drones allowed so yeah so that's it I think I'll have a wander down to the front gate and wander down to Jones Brothers and probably have another bit of a natter so yeah just thought I'd uh, you know getting a few questions and in the early days I used to get a lot of questions what's the security where's the morgue that's another thing People have been in the grounds and they've been searching for the morgue and it's pretty, quite easy to find what's left of it. Anyway, the roof's gone on it now. It used to be like a glass roof on it and that. But there's the isolation ward, as they say, or the isolation hospital. That was a hospital, hospital within a hospital for patients with contagious diseases. They were put in that isolation ward or isolation hospital so it wouldn't spread around the, the hospital. And the morgue is just behind that, so it's pretty easy to find, but yeah, where's the morgue? People want to find the morgue. So, right, I'll have a wander down to the, uh, what was the front entrance. There's only two entrances, and one entrance was here, which was very rarely used. Well, we used to use it when we used to go to the pavilion, straight through, past the waybridge and the chimney, round past the canteen, and then drop down to the cinder track, which is haunted. <laughs> I almost forgot to mention that. That's an ongoing joke, by the way. So, yeah, um, I'll have a wander down to the uh, front entrance, or what was the front entrance, and see what's happening down there, and see if uh, Mr. Security is there, if he's going to give us a wave. So, right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so this is, or was, the main entrance, which is all locked up now with the giant Lego bricks, as they call them. Very overgrown now too. So yeah, this is the uh, main entrance. I'll show you the. Uh, I can get through here. And it's when it, in its heyday, the the mental, it was immaculate. You see it now. It's all overgrown. It's all rose bushes either side of the driver. It was there wasn't a weed in or, or a plant in in out of place. It was immaculate. The grounds, all the whole of the grounds, there was. Uh, rose bushes there and rose bushes there as you're leading up to the front gate and that's where the patient came out where are we there front gate there front door I should say and he fell to his death and I was the only one that witnessed it like I say it was about seven or eight I never a vehicle driving around and I'll never forget it and above there was the chapel by the way there was a big water tank there that they uh, pumped uh, water from the the river after that but there was and the chapel was above the front door there the chapel was there but it was deemed too small so they built a chapel at the back where the isolation ward was which I showed you earlier and then the morgue and the chapels behind there it would you could get about 200 people in but like I say the original chapel was above the front door there but yeah that's where I witnessed a uh, patient fall to his death and I was the only one that witnessed it. And I'll never forget it to this day. Right, let's head down to the uh, Jones Brothers entrance. And then the haunted cinder truck. And here comes the car. And there goes the car. And just on my left here was the, the mental farm. We used to have the, uh, the cattle, the poultry and... So they'd have milk, eggs, meat and all stuff like that. It was uh, like a, a village, they called it. You know, a village, uh, it was all self-contained. They had carpenters, tailors, laundry and uh, electricians and there were all sorts of trades people and stuff as well as patient labour. Um, and the, the, the uh, most haunted, they called it Village of the Damned. They were wrong to call it that. Village, yes, a village, but not village of the damned. They're trying to make it a bit, you know, 
try to build it up, but they were wrong to call it the village of the damned. That was not, out of, you know, it was, that was out of order. And it was a big fire here. And that's when they closed it, closed the farm. And if you look on the, uh, there's a plaque here, you can just about make it out. See Pennant's farm and building. But the original name, when the uh, mental, you know, up and running, when it was the mental farm, it wasn't called the Pennant Farm. And I've covered this in a few videos, but off the top of my head, I can't think what its original name was, but it wasn't Pennant Farm. But yeah, like I say, there's uh, old trades people and stuff. Gardeners, especially gardeners. We had the old slaughter man, their own slaughter man. He used to slaughter the, the cattle and stuff for the meat. And, you know, it was all, it was a self-contained, as they say, it was all like, like a village. But uh, to call it Village of the Damned, they're trying to be a bit dramatic, weren't they? But they shouldn't have called it that. They could have called it something else. They were a bit out of order calling it that. That's not on that. And that was a few years ago too. Right, this is uh, Jones Brothers entrance, as I call it. May as well carry on nattering. I speed up a bit. But uh, yeah, it's a bit naughty calling it Village of the Damned. And I'm not going to cross the line. <laughs> oh, no way. Cross the line and film in. I'll be shot on sight. Is my mate here today? Nope. They got uh, the signs up. Oh, they are. Look, they've got another. No drones. Hopefully, you can see that there. No drones and guard dogs and all sorts. But uh, oh, they've been cutting the grass since I was here last. But uh, yeah, lovely day. So this is the entrance that Jones Brothers are using now. All this was walled off. But, uh, yeah. No movement, no sign of any movement. Uh, Allard Ward, which is there. Female 7A, 7B and 8 wards. And like I say, if you're new to the channel and you want to see what it's like inside that place, check out my videos. 30, 30 plus years, I call it now. Um, I've already been documenting the place, so doing walkabouts and all sorts of stuff and clashes with security and everything. So yeah, if you're interested, like I say, 30 years I've been doing this now and ain't going to stop anytime soon. Anyway, I'll just pop down the cinder track. There's usually nothing going on down there, but anyway, that's the uh, Jones Brothers entrance. And a car! <laughs> right. So this is the uh, cinder truck, which is haunted. Did I mention it was haunted? Might not have mentioned that. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd mention it. It is haunted, by the way. And the cinder truck, originally, uh, why it's called the cinder truck, is because the old cinders from the heating systems and the boilers, this is where they used to dump the cinders. It used to be thick, about four inches thick. Um, you could just about ride a bike on it, but if you walked it, it'd be crunching and it was thick black. And they used to chuck the cinders down the wheel, they used to top, chuck everything. There was three tips where they used to chuck all the old stuff they couldn't burn in the incinerator. Incinerator's at the back to the side of the canteen, it's not there now. But um, anything they couldn't burn, they used to just dump. And we used to come here when we were kids and root, root through. Um, and see what we could find and stuff like that, but yeah, like I say, it used to be black, this, thick with cinders, and that's, that's why it's called the cinder track. So yeah, uh, it's a bit overgrown today too. So that's, uh, oh, it's haunted too, by the way, did I, did I mention it was haunted? I might not have mentioned that. But yeah, this is, uh, from, like I say, from the heating system, you just chuck, chuck the cinders, the waste cinders. As you can see, the cinder track is used by vehicles. I hope I got that in shot. Uh, but yeah, this is where we used to come down, cut through, and then go down to the pavilion, which is the uh, cricket ground and the, the rugby pitch, which was built by patient labour. And then a bit further on was the dam, the Denby Dam, which was a water source for the mental, going back years. Um, originally from Gal Hill, which is way over that way, towards, well, 
way over the other side. They diverted a stream to a, to a little reservoir. I'm not sure where the reservoir was in the grounds, but that's the original source of water. And then it's from the Denby Dam. And they used to have a big water tank above the front, um, front door. But there was a reservoir from Galt Hill. Um, they, like I say, they diverted a stream. But the, uh, when the uh, Denby Dam, um, they were uh, patients, escapees, used to get a lot of escapees, and they were going to the Denby Dam and jumping in and committing suicide. So they blew it up. They dynamited it. But there's still two little sections of the dam that you can see today. And like I say, if you want to see it, check out my videos. It's all 30 years now. <laughs> Just in case I never mentioned it. But yeah, they used to have escapees. Like I say, there was sort of four categories of patients. Ones that were locked in Bringolai and locked in the wards. Also, yeah, in the early days too. Overnight, I think it's from 10 at night till 6 in the morning or something like that. Off the top of my head, like I say, I've covered it all this in, in other videos. Um, there were patients were literally locked in, locked in the wards. There was no staff, no nurses, no doctors, nothing, just the patients. They used to lock them in, close the door, close the gate, and then they used to open up. The next morning, sometimes they'd be, they'd be having fits or they'd be dead and stuff like that. Um, but they, they changed that then, so they were manned at night. And it was originally built just to, for 200 beds. That's the original for the, uh, the mental. And by the mid-60s, there was over 1,500 patients. And then they opened up, um, you know, more wards and stuff like that. They just kept, kept adding on to it and adding on to it. Yeah, it was only original for 200 patients. And it just kept escalating. Just, and it was... Like I say, mid 60s, it was 1, 000, over 1,500 patients. This is where we used to come down here. That wasn't there. We used to come down here on our bikes or what have you. Around there, down there, and to the pavilion, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute now. And then uh, we used to be messed about. We were always in the pavilion, which is not there now. Well, the bottom half is just about there. There was a big fire there. Uh, so, yeah, 200 patients, and it ended up 1,500. So, anyway, I'll show you the uh, where the pavilion and the rugby and the cricket ground was, all built by by patient labour. As I say, the, the hospital wouldn't have survived as it did without patient labour. Those that could work or you know could have a job, they used to do used to to have jobs and work and stuff like that. Like I say, it was like a, like a little village, but not the village of the damned, most taunted, getting a bit carried away there. Shouldn't have called it that. Anyway, I'll show you where the pavilion was. Cricket pavilion and the rugby pavilion. Right, this is the, uh, or what was the pavilion. What's the bottom half of it there, you can see it's all brickwork and the top half was all timber. And as I said before, if you want to see what it actually looks like, or looked like, check out my videos. Because um, I used to be um, come here, you know, when, when I was first started off, when I had a tape um, video camera, you know, with uh, no memory cards in them days, but anyway, recorded that, you can see what, what it was like, but like I say, it's burnt down, but that was the cricket side, and that was the rugby side, and as I said, it's built by uh, patient labour. So right, I'll head back up. Yeah, as I can say, if you carry on down there, past the, the house there, and you come to the Denby Dam, which is, uh, used to, well, was once, used to be a water supply for the mental. But like I say, the patients were committing suicide there, so they blew it up. But you can still see, well, a good section of it. But uh, yeah, it's so sad. Like, and I said earlier, you know, the, the jumpers on the side of the castle, we used to run up Love Lane, we used to sit on the wall, we used to watch, you know, the negotiators and the police would be there. And It's sad. At the time, when we were kids, we thought, oh, great fun, you know, watching a jumper and stuff like that. But when you think, it's sad, isn't it? Quite sad. Right, so that's uh, 
my natter for today I think my visit to the mental and another natter and a bit of an update and how it all started and as I said I ain't gonna stop anytime soon so thanks for watching and I'll see you again